Hello again, and welcome to Sailboat video series. This episode will continue just where we left in the last episode. So if you haven't watched that, I should just you do that now. We're continuing now making the test frame number three for my liveaboard cruising sailboat. You can see right here. And yeah, things have been happening here, but about that later. So remember to subscribe now and follow this journey. Let's get back into making this test frame. So last Sunday I was here making this another test piece which is from the last frame and which is much easier curve to do. In addition I did all the slats for this frame and also a few of these clamps just for test purposes. And today, a week later, I'm trying to laminate this thing down and test all of these things I have figured out so far. And additionally, I did bunch of these clamps with the CNC from 30 millimeter plywood and these should fit now something like this and with these I can clamp this down from two ends and it should make the joint between the plywoods and these slats perfect. Now I think I'll start making a few more of these clamps. There is a five of them here and I need a few more so let's take a look a little closer what they look like, then figure out all this setup and yeah, I hope I can laminate this today. It looks very good, it has been in this shape for a week now and uh, let's start by taking this off from these clamps. All right, now it has taken apart and here you can see the filler piece on the inside. This will be part of the lamination. This is just a few of these pieces I made for the clamping guides or what they might be. There's a couple of doubles here just to fit it perfectly on its place and it also helps it to be still when I'm pressing it down so it won't move this way either. So it will create this curve right here that the slats will laminate with. It works great, I cut it with CNC as well and yeah, I think that's the way to go with all these filler pieces in the bigger frames like the floors and stuff like that. Let's take a look at a little bit of these clamps now. As you can see it is bolted down with the hole in the table. There is a nut on the other side of this as well. And then there is two of these little bit smaller rods that go through the piece and on this end there is a thread nut that can be hammered down. I think these work very well actually. And the reason there is two of course is that I can get one in the middle of this. So if there is only one it will turn on the way of another so now there is two of these. And these were just scrap pieces of the material I used with the table and now I need to make more of this stuff actually to make more of these clamps and for that I'm gonna use the scrap pieces. I'm gonna film the <laughs> usage of basic tools but let's continue when I have done these.
now everything should be ready for the glue up. Now there is all these clamps around here. These are the slats I'm gonna use. I have all the rods here ready to go. And I changed a few of these for the rods as well. So when I take these CNC cut clamp do that, I can put them afterwards when everything is in there and the top piece, this one is on there. I can put this on top of everything like so, like that, and then bolt it down and it holds it down and pushes the whole thing down and in that way we should get rid of that gap between the plywood and the slats. Yeah, there might be a need for putting a, some kind of a longitudinal additional piece between there to kind of spread the load this way, but we'll see about that. But now <coughs> I think I'll clean up this mess around here and set up my epoxy station in here somewhere and uh, then we'll just apply the epoxy and exciting to see if this works now. I have learned so much on the previous attempt, so I think it's gonna work. All right, now I have set up the mixing station, the lights, it's gonna be dark quite soon, and uh, camera's battery is a bit low, so I set up the time-lapse camera as well. So let's get into it. I got the scale here. This was 100 to 13. Right now there is exactly 200 grams of resin, then the hardener, 26 grams. What I have learned from other channels, the mixing phase is quite the critical one with epoxy. This should be the slow epoxy, but it's quite warm in here now. It's over 20 degrees, maybe even 25, so the work time will be somewhat limited. Now I think it's done and I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of this silica just to get a bit of a structure for this is quite liquid. Okay, I think that's enough. I'm gonna start with this piece right here. So I have to put some epoxy on the bottom side to glue it down like that. And then I'm gonna start with the first slat by putting some epoxy in here and on the bottom, just holding it there. Whoops. Just gonna put some down here. So what I have learned that with wood, you have to kind of wet it out so that the wood can absorb the epoxy enough. So. I think it's a good idea not to hold that cup in your hand when it's warm like this. This is very smooth, plain surface, so it won't get that much absorbed unlike the previous test when I have kind of very rough surface and there was quite a lot of epoxy going in there. Now when you look at it, these are so smooth that it's nice squeeze out coming even though there is not much of the epoxy. That was the end of the first batch. I'm gonna do another 200 grams and uh, yeah, I'm gonna pause the video and put the camera in charger for a while, so.
Right, now everything has been wetted out. There's epoxy everywhere. And now the fun part begins, the pressing with these clamps. So uh, there's already plywood pieces here and here just to protect the surface because these are a bit sharp. So far this clamping method seems to work very well. Plenty of adjustability with these clamps. This end is the most challenging you see once you go good three to four centimeters that way. I hope there's enough epoxy in that bottom plywood. There is quite a lot in here, so I am sure there is too. It's not yet fully in there, but now I think I'll get this top piece and put it in there for good. So let's wet this out now. All right, some epoxy was left over. It changes shape just a little bit when there is pressure in there, so that's why it's a bit tricky to get in place. But now it's in there and now it should hold. And now I should be ready for making the last push and putting those upside clamps in there. if I have to ease this pressure a little bit to push it down, but I'll put the nuts on here first. Oh no, the battery of the camera will die soon. I'm gonna pause it just a little moment. The battery is going to die very soon. I figure out I can use also a power drill to push this here and uh, everything's now in place and it looks very good. And uh, I'm gonna put just a few more clamps between here just in case. And uh, yeah, it's now Sunday evening, late August. It's pretty warm being lately and the night will be warm as well. So I think it's gonna be good for tomorrow, but Tomorrow I will be on work trip, so I won't be getting here tomorrow. So I have to wait for a couple of days to be exactly sure what it's been done here, but it's all right. I'm quite confident this is now very well secured and laminated. I think my clamping method worked very well. They didn't move at all when I put these in. Just a little test. Yeah, the epoxy in the cup is still very, very liquid, so no worries there. Right. Okie dokie, it's now Tuesday evening and this was done in Sunday, so it's two days later. It seems to be cured well, at least in cup. As you may see here, it's hardened. It's a bit sticky on top. That's maybe because it has been a bit humid 
evenings already, so I don't know if this is the amine blush or something like that. But anyway, time to now take this off from the mold and see what happens. I hope this is good. Let's start with these. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing. Yeah. They seem to work great. Some of these bolts are a bit tight. I don't think it's the holes, but they are the bolts themselves. Just a tiny bit bigger than others. They tend to stuck. And now the moment of truth. Nothing happened. Just a tiny bit of moment with this last one. Not that much. Now let's see if we can get it off from there. Getting a full-size frame out of this table can be interesting. <laughs> Here it is. It looks quite good, actually. All right. Let's take a little closer. Look. So, this is a test frame number three and hopefully the last test frame. Okay, these have moved a little bit downwards, but that's okay because this is going to be trimmed out. Uh, but the main thing here is that if you take a look at this end, there's no gaps in here. So this method of pressing them down and also these slats being very accurately same width seems to work well. No gaps there either. There is no gap. There's a tiny bit of gap here. This is the spacer piece that was glued before. But otherwise this looks perfect. All right, but now let's trim these off and see what we have inside. A multi-tool would be great for this, but I don't have one, so I'm just gonna use a chisel. They should be not glued into the frame. other side. Now they are off. Now I can just take a jigsaw and saw these other sides off. Yeah, I should have a multi-tool here and a trim router now to trim all this and put nice radios here and stuff like that. But I don't have those, so subscribe the channel and give me a like and go to check the Patreon so I can afford these tools in the future. But what I do have is a jigsaw and I have to be a little careful with this because it tends to tear up the plywood pretty good, so. Now the flappy flappies are off. And now I need to trim this end, and that here, and that end. And then we need to switch to planer. This is looking very good so far. 
This is the only place there is a bit of a gap and that's with the filler piece. I'm not sure if there is something between there to prevent it going down. Maybe this double here is not a completely right spot. That might be cause that because everything else is perfect. And I'm very, very pleased with that. The quality of the lamination, it is absolutely perfect. And on the other end, it's absolutely perfect as well. So this is what we're looking for. And look at this seam. All right, now I have to switch to planer and plane this end and make the bevel and then clean up these edges as well. So there is a bit of a wonkiness on here, but let's see that in just a moment. Right, now this end is very close to finished. So the plywood edges right here, right here are the shape of the frame. And now I have planed this down to those edges and it is almost perfect. I think it's as perfect as I can get it. Here you can see a bit of a gap, and that's because this slat right here wasn't under this plywood here. So it wasn't being pushed down that much. So I think I'm gonna fix that by making small tabs on the top plywood, which is a little bit smaller than the bottom, so that when I push them down, it will push the overhanging slat downward as well. Something to learn. That's why we made tests. Yeah, the power planer is so aggressive that I just take the very rough part of the piece with that and then I'm using this just ordinary planer. I don't think single stroke of planer matters anything with the shape of the bolt. All right, I think that's good enough. And, and as you can see, maybe, Zoom in a little bit, like so. With this method, there is a tiny gap leaving in here. So of course this edge of the plywood is straight and the angle goes like that. So there's a tiny bit of gap leaving here, but I think that's gonna be all right. It's gonna be filled with epoxy when the hull strips will be glued on this. So I don't think that matters anything. This is the manual labor part of this frame build. I think it's all right. This took maybe 15 minutes to complete. Now let's trim the other side, which is all of these. So here we have remains of those gluing doodads. And here are some shapes we have to trim. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do the first job with this and then continue with sander or something.
Yeah, now I should have the trimmer router or the multi-tool to trim these off efficiently. But I don't, so yeah. To remember to always plane plywood from outside to inside. Some tear up there. Yeah, I definitely need sharpening tools. This is such a dull chisel. Sharp chisel would be nice. Now I don't have any tools to sharpen them, so let's just try to manage. All right, I think that's good as I'm gonna get it with these tools. I really need to take a closer look of the Leo's last video of sharpening things. Here is the test frame number three, and I think it turned out not perfect, but very, very, very good. So the main thing is that the clamping works very well. The quality of the lamination is almost perfect. There is really nothing major to improve anymore. So that is very good news, and I'm now confident how these clamps work and how I'm gonna do these. Otherwise, I learned quite a bit how I should handle these afterwards. I have to be really careful with tear-ups and I need sharp chisels and planers to make everything smoothly. So this frame piece is part of the last frame of the boat, the very transom. So the front of the boat is there and this is the uh, port side, I think. The frame will be like this and it will continue like that over here and in this notch there will be the clamp molding a beam that goes across the boat so in these frames there is ready to go very precise place for those and it is easy to laminate in here and the top here is also cut a little shorter it extends maybe like that and the deck of the boat will be on this level and this end will be the inside of the bulwark and of course the shell or the strip planking will be on that end. So these will form the bulwark and this is just a straight part where I can laminate things against to form like deck beams uh, on the other side of this beam right here. So this is straight. All right. Uh, these clamps were a pretty much success and they are really cheap to build. So this is a scrap wood, this is some scrap plywood. These nuts and bolts, they cost like a, maybe one euro, two euros per piece. So nothing major there. And I can make more of these very easily. So these are very good, they worked just as I thought they would, and that means I don't have to spend money that much at this point to clamps like these, which will cost maybe up 15 euros a piece, so significant savings there. And of course, these are lower, easy to use, and they clamp on this table perfectly, so very good. And also these, clamps. I have quite a bunch of them in here. 
I got them with the CNC from scrap pile of plywood and they work very well as well. For this test frame still, I think I'm gonna continue testing with this thing by coating this with epoxy, rounding the edges a little bit. And I'm also thinking if I should cover these with thin layer of fiberglass just to cover them from heat by anything. And that is something I have never done before as well, so it would be a good practice with these. And of course these are gonna be painted. These will be seen on this channel in the future as well. But I think that's it for this video. I'm gonna put some teaser footage on the end of cutting the first frame of the boat. So subscribe the channel, give me a like, and we will see you hopefully soon with the actual boat build starting with the first piece. I am so thrilled with that. Bye!